Okay, I'm, uh, this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways, you know. Please vote, obviously. You know, encourage as many people as you can to vote, especially younger folks, because I think it's kind of lost there quite a bit. And if there was more encouragement, that would be helpful. Um, I'd also like to say that, uh, you know, I'm really beating the odds by being here. Uh, number one, I'm a woman, and that counts against me in politics and a lot of, you know, areas of life. Um, I've lived on the poverty line my whole life. I've been part of a group that is underrepresented and my, my biggest contribution, if I could give anything, is, is just to get everybody together and really represent those people that are invisible, that really, you know, could benefit from, from somebody advocating for them. Uh, which leads me into my three platform points. Uh, free higher education, uh, it, it's definitely possible. <laughs> before, it can happen again. Um, there's, you know, a, a few ways I propose doing that. Um, you know, and getting people into higher education and into vocational training is going to support what we need, which is, you know, a green uh, living wage workforce that, you know, can support itself through education. Um, and alongside with that, my last point uh, is, you know, uh, ecological awareness and conservation. We live in a Mediterranean zone here in the Bay Area. It's one of the few in the world. And there's so many assets and resources that California has that we need to protect for future generations as well. Um, and it goes without saying, if you're not educated, you don't know what's going on. Um, if I could just say one more thing, which is to encourage everybody to participate in any way you can, even if it's just very, a very small way, participation is honestly the key to, to really help, sh to help shape communities as well as, as the state. Um, you know, and everybody definitely has something that they can contribute uniquely. Um, so I just want to say thank you guys for having me here today. So again, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Uh, I do want to invoke <coughs> the first peoples of this land because they have a very beautiful country that is relevant today, and that is abundance is built into the process. Abundance is how nature works. Abundance is the law of the, of the land, of the air, of the sea. We have to align our government to that nature, to those laws, to that the way it's done. Right now we have a scarcity concept, it's a scarcity system. We're all fighting for budget changes and everything, and they got us believing it, and we're all doing it at home. I mean, I, I'm, my mortgage is being, I'm cleaning my car off because I can't afford this. We're all playing the game. They're all illusions. The waste system is an illusion. Borders are illusions. These are all created man-made things where power is being held. I want to tell you something about Salinas. Salinas, one of the poorest communities you're going to find in East Salinas, Alexandria. Go down there, poor. People don't got nothing. They're working without no overpay, 40, more than 40 hours a week, nothing. Guess what? That industry in just Salinas alone generates a billion dollars. The money is there, but it's being held by a small group of people. They've created a world that, that now we have to be as stand, uh, be in. I don't want to stand in that world. I want to stand in the world that we can imagine and that we can create. And I just want to add one last thing because I, I really believe this is a great opening for new politics in the state of California. Uh, I wish you all could be with me when we talk to all these people up and down the state. Some of the people we talk to, some of the youth, some of the organizations that's the leaders part. But we've been to other places where people stepped out. It's amazing how grassroots can work, and yet it may not translate into folks. That's how crazy the whole system is. We've got so many people engaged, interested, and it may not translate. So again, we have to cut that short and say, it must translate. People are out there organizing. we got to convince them there is a way to get engaged. There is a meaningful a a aspect to this. My thing is not to give up any political or cultural ground to the 1%. They want to control the elections? No. They want to control the media? No. They want to control how we do banking and financing? No. Not to give up anything to them. we got to take all that space little by little, battle by battle, school by school, body by body, reservation by reservation, but we're going to take that space. Thank you. tell you just a little bit about what I've been doing this spring and some of the reaction I've been getting on the street. It's extraordinary. I stand out. San Francisco is uh, unique uh, in that we've got some very high traffic areas, a lot of people. 
going, particularly going to and from work. Tomorrow morning, I'll be out at the 24th Street uh, BART station down in the Mission District. I've campaigned there before. And I'll stand there, sometimes with a sign like this, sometimes I'll have an eight and a half, eleven of just this part, will you vote for Nancy Pelosi, or, and I put it on the ground, and in a, a little plastic picture frame like this, and then right behind that is a larger campaign sign that I, I've had from a couple years ago, it just says, Barry Hermson Green for Congress. And I just stand there, and I don't say anything, but I've got cards in my hands. A hundred people an hour reach out and take the card from me. I'm not shoving it in your face. I'm not forcing you because I don't like it when literature is just handed out and then you go down in the bar platform later and all that stuff is lying all over the ground and people think, oh, it must be crap. I take great pride in the fact that if I go down the bar platform later, I don't find any of my literature. They've kept it. It is People are hungry for this. So yesterday, I'm out, I'm out at Carnival. I spent all day standing there. Yes, most people were not interested in politics at all, but about 150 cards got taken. And it is wonderful to look at, at, as the light bulb goes off in people's eyes. Today, I was down in the mission, and I walked by an ice cream line with this, and a couple of people, and one guy says, well, yeah, I'm going to vote for Pelosi. And I said, well, sir, she's going to get the most votes in June. We'll be on the ballot in November. No question. The question is, who's going to be her opponent? Is it going to be a Republican or is it going to be a Green? And the guy looks, and he looks at my card, and he says, I'll vote for you. <laughs> And all of a sudden, there's two or three other people online who are taking my card, too, and, all, and then we're listening. Top four issues. I've listed ten things on my card. A global living wage. Our trade agreements in this country should be modified. Why should we allow our corporations to send jobs overseas and then we employ people in sweatshops to bring the products back to us? Every time I mention that to any single person on the street, everybody agrees. And improve Medicare for all. Even my former colleagues in the small business community agree. Our health care system is broken. And they will. When the, when the insurance guys are out of the room, I bring it up, they'll all nod. Yeah, we, we'd like single payer. Interest-free student loans. This is something we could do today. $1.2 trillion in student debt. Strangling our young people. We're now going to have a housing crisis because people can't afford to buy this stuff down because they've got so much student debt, which they can never go bank. You know, they never declare bankruptcy. And finally, the fourth, fourth one is oh, so many people get it. Label GMOs. Oh, just yeah. label it. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to see them outlawed, but let's just take that little step of labeling. Everybody gets it. So I'm having so much fun out there. This is why I'm confident that I will finish at the top two in June. I need as little as 20,000 votes. But I still need your help, and I, I appreciate the comment to tell 10 people. Please take some of my cards along, even if you don't live in San Francisco, and hand them to some other folks and say, you know what, this is an opportunity to challenge a leader of the Democratic Party. And everybody knows somebody in San Francisco. And get in touch with them to say, hey, you know, you can always vote for Pelosi in November. No. <laughs> well, I know you won't. But this is really people like this guy in the, in the ice cream line today. He's, without thinking, he's going to vote for her. But when he stopped to think a moment, he agreed. Wouldn't it be? Because all I'm trying to do is to see if for the first time since 1987, we can have a candidate for him or a debate in this district. There's never been one since she's been elected. Isn't that incredible? Yes. 
How many politicians do you know have gone through their entire political career without having to debate? Without having to sit down and listen to the concerns of their constituents in an unscripted format? This is appalling. So I ask for your support. Please take, I've got about 700 cards that I brought with me. Please take a few <laughs> along with you and pass the word. Please vote. In 2012, unfortunately, Greens in San Francisco did not vote. Our own party had one of the lowest turnouts of any political party in San Francisco. Only 28% of us showed up. That should not be. Thank you. Deborah Bowen, a Democrat, is term limited, so she can't run again. I assume you all know that. Uh, well, if she was running again, I don't know that I would oppose her. She does a pretty good job. It's okay. Um, she inherited a situation with the top two primary. It kind of sucks for us and a lot of other people. Um, here's the drill. Uh, currently, there's only been one poll conducted in this race. Uh, the field poll came out. Uh, I'm in the top three. So I'm, I'm in third place. Um, I thought the reason they booted me off of the second debate was they didn't want me polling. <coughs> but guess what? They haven't conducted another poll. So I am now polling somewhere between 6% and Padilla. So, um, so the voters have a choice. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running is I think democratic elections are a good idea. I'd like to have them. Um, you know, I'm running for the chief executive of the elections, I mean, chief officer. We need democratic elections. They've been co-opted by the corporate money. Um, so, you know, that's what I would do. I would work towards making the process more neutral, like a public job hiring process. That means all the candidates receive equal presentation. That means what? Access to the airwaves. Everybody would have equal access to the airwaves. When Nader talked about it, a million people talk about it. Uh, corporations have co-opted the airwaves. Um, so they're, they're about to co-opt the internet. We're going to have an apartheid internet. You know? so, so the choice right now is there's three guys in the running. I'm in somewhere in third place. I don't know how far back of the I am. But the voters have to decide. We know what elections look like under a Democratic Secretary of State. We've got the last two cycles. We know, we maybe remember what elections look like under Republicans, uh, particularly at the presidential level. It's not so hot. So, you know, I'd like to see what an election looks like under a Green. Um, that's why I'm running. Um, I'd like to see what an election looks like under a Green. Um, and they say we can't even run for state office, and I say, go fuck yourself, I'm running, you know? <laughs> it's, it's America, we have free speech, we have freedom of association, we have a lot of stuff that's worth fighting for, and they want to take it all, you know? I read the Constitution, I know what's in it. Slavery. They, they want to break it right and left. They want to send cops to our house every time we, you know, break a fake law. So, you know, that's what you get with a green Secretary of State. You get somebody who actually values the Constitution, likes the concept of democratic process, wants open debates with all the candidates presented. No, no monkey business. They are putting their thumb on the scale right and left, and we go along with it, we pay for $4 gas. You know? So that's why I'm running. I'm in third place, and I'm doing every single thing I could possibly do that's legal. Uh, to get there. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to be second place. Uh, I've still got one more arrow in the quiver. Um, we'll be releasing that this week. It's going to be a viral video and uh, it'll probably go global. So uh, yeah, my website's votedavidcurtis.org. If you go to that website or if you go to Twitter, dc underscore us, you're automatically pulled into my nation builder and then you get email. If you haven't gone to my website, you don't get email. So. All right, thank you. So we want to thank the six candidates, and they'll probably be around for a few minutes to talk to all of you. I, I want to remind you, we, we have two or three hundred of these. You can hand them out. I get them out on BART all the time. You know, leave a few on the seat, hand them to people. There is, as I 
is that for placing here to fill out your information if you didn't sign the list that went around, if you don't hear from us for some reason, send this thing in here. It will go, as I said, to Alameda County, and I'll help Greg sort that out so that we get your information to everyone. Um, there's a booklet over here in English and Spanish on the budget. It's the California budget. So if you have people you know that don't understand the budget, if you don't understand the California state budget, it's coming up to, as you know, Jerry's got his budget out, and how does that process work? And this book has that information. Thank you all for coming. Oh, you're surprised. <laughs>